them way on the east side. I keep my eyes on the sparrow. Pulls that bows and arrows. Can't kick it cause it's wicked like the pharaoh. And the war with the devil is a level far beyond. From the Babylon come many red rum. So follow as we journey through the creepy sleepy hollow. Take this morning. Ascension, <clears throat> what is it? When is it? How is it? Where is it? Who is it? I'm Rockin' Larry Lockin' with the Larry Lockin' channel in association with Pleiadian Express Productions slash YouTube, as well as the Pleiadian Light Grid Project, now known as the Larry Lockin' 2 channel. Ascension, wow, yeah man, yeah man, what do you think guys? Well, I'll tell you. Sports fans, star babies, you know, I'm not really here to give my opinion on it or how it goes down or how it breaks down. I'm just kind of here to talk about, uh, you know, some possibilities with it. Now, keep in mind, if you wanted my opinion on all this, I'll give it to you. I think everybody's opinion is right, I think, on some reality timeline. Because we're not only dealing with a collective timeline here, we're also dealing with everybody's own lifetime. So... You know, those two are kind of kind of intersect at some point. You know, I think that they're kind of waiting in the future for our past to maybe intersect with their present. And we'll see how that rolls out. But, uh, yeah, you know, um, there's a multitude, really, of interpretations of Ascension. You know, it's, it's really even, there's really just a few, actually. But really what it is, is there's a lot of different opinions on how it goes down, of how... You know, and how it works, when it's going to be. You know, is it just for an individual person? Is it for the planet? Is it for the collective? Is it, you know, going to split, you know, off into another higher dimensional Earth? See, I think all these things are a reality, though. All these things are definitely a reality in some, you know, in, in different parallel realities, past lifetimes, whatever, you know, whatever you want to, however you want to call it. Um, it, it really is a multi-layered concept, you know, this thing of ascension. Um, you know, and, and the word sometimes, there's kind of a mystical quality about the word, I guess you would say. You know, when I think of ascension, I know that you hear it in the mainstream, and you think, oh, he ascended to the greatness of his sport. He ascended to the rank of um, a uh, major general, or he ascended to the rank of admiral, or something like that, or ascended to um, the top of the charts, and maybe some music. But when I think of the word, because of the community I'm in, you know, with star seeds, light workers, you know, angels, incarnees, contactees, you name it, right? I think of it as kind of in the spiritual ascension sense, like, um, it's kind of, um, I think it goes hand in hand really with the process of evolution, you know, you get caught up, you know, in years past some of these people, they are either totally for the evolution theory or they're totally for the creationist theory and either one of them thinks the other, the other side is a, is a joke, but really in reality when you think about it, it's, it's, I don't think there's really any debate about it that the, the two kind of go hand in hand when you're talking about creationism and evolution, you know, the spiritual ascension, uh, sometimes it's known as, uh, it kind of, I, I don't know if it's known as, but it's kind of tied in with spiritual awakening, right? You're having an awakening, so I think that awakening is a natural ascension of your mind, soul, and body, you know? It seems to me like it's kind of a natural part of evolution. It's like you're working on sh shedding your old self, your old paradigm, you know, how you, you know, might have thought in the past, and you're always looking to upgrade. You're always looking to get rebooted. You're always trying to elevate that vibrational frequency, you know. Um, and, and as you, you know, and I notice, you know, my thing with it is, is I think that as you move forward, if you move through that process with that inner evolution, that inner kind of awakening, inner ascension, I guess you want to call it, uh, um, it will transcend your, your old habits, your old beliefs, you know, these mindsets that you get locked into at times, right? These 3D mindsets and paradigms that you're stuck in, it kind of, it'll transcend that and expand your openness to those kind of things. Expand, expand your awareness, expand your consciousness, all that stuff. 
You know, um, and sometimes when you're going through these ascensions, man, it accompanies some rough shifts. Boy, I can tell you that. You know, you go you go through, you ever heard, heard of that dark night of the soul? I know, star babies, you all have. You've heard of that dark night of the soul. You know, and it's kind of, man, I swear I've gone through a few of them. Uh, I'm probably under-exaggerating by saying a few, but yeah, I've gone through, through some pretty rough things, some pretty rough shifts. Not nearly as bad as a lot of people I've known when they're having, you know, ascension symptoms. A uh, co former co-host of mine on here, who I hope to do some more shows with, Raquel Toombs. Man, in 2014, that girl had the worst ones I'd ever heard of. I would sit on the phone with her for four or five hours a night. Like, man, I mean, I'm sure... I, I ran into, like, one other person that had them similar to her, but out of the thousands of people I've talked to, and I mean thousands, not quite like that. Um, she felt, man, she felt like she was turning into a bird or into an animal. Her body was just bad everywhere. I'm not talking leg cramps. I'm talking head cramps, leg cramps, gut cramps, arm cramps. I mean, she'd be laying on the floor, stretched out sometimes for 20 hours at a time, this girl. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So, you know, that dark night of the soul can be a, can be a bitch. And, uh, you know, my, <laughs> I'm not sure we just have one of them. I've had what I think are a few. You know, but when you know some of the some of the things like that you can you can take from this like that co that go into this this ascension, the spiritual ascension. You know, as far as what we want to talk or we want to um, how we want to describe it in our community, because um, it can be viewed from a lot of different angles. We know that, and even in our community, you know, you have you know you have your mind awakening. Um, you know, when you 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 have this epiphany, right? You have this mental realization of something. And we've all had those, and they're great moments when we have them. Some are more profound than others, you know? But some are really like, wow, man, it's mind-blowing. You know, and then you can also kind of, you know, you kind of change who you are. Maybe your personality gets a little bit different. Um, you know, you, you, you have a little bit more acceptance and understanding of people. Um, you You embrace those qualities a lot more than you might have in the past um you might find yourself here's a big one for me too like i was thinking about this too um as far as like the, this ascension goes and the awakening goes it, it, i feel like more spiritual not in any kind of organized or biblical way but you know like for instance like deep into meditation um trying some yoga there's other things, though, that you can do, too, that I haven't personally, I know, I, and I, these are things I should be into trying, you know, Tai Chi, um, telekinesis, you know, different, different methods like that, I'd like to learn it all, you know, it's just sometimes I haven't had the opportunity, and, you know, other things take precedent, um, but, you know, I think what's important is, is if you, if you're really committed to doing it to your body, and don't do it out of any kind of obligation you feel to anybody else. This is ha this has to come from you. If you're doing it because you think somebody else is going to be happy that you did it, or you're doing it because it's going to please somebody else, you know what? Reevaluate and detach from those thoughts, man, in a hurry, like in a hurry. But, you know... What I've been advised to do is, and I haven't been the best at doing this, is start your own routine with this stuff. You know what I mean? Um, you know, get a daily practice, maybe take a journal, um, you know, think about your life's purpose. Make sure you're, you know, you have a solid connection with your spirit guides and whatnot. And, you know, do your yoga, do your tai chi, things like that. Now, I want to go back on one thing. There's a lot of people that think, okay, we're going to ascend now. A lot of people, or soon. Uh, one friend of mine thinks it's going to be 200 years from now that we're off by 200 years. I've talked to another person who thinks we missed the boat in 2012, which is not true because really 2030 is what 2012 was supposed to be. 2012 was just a halfway point in the 36-year harmonic or harmonic convergence, okay? That's another story I've talked about, okay, you know. Uh, I'm not going to get into that one too much here, but, um, there's a lot of disagreement on when it's going to happen, how it, yeah, you know, is it yeah, exactly, like I said, is it going to be in 200 years from now? Is it going to be in 2025? Is it going to be in 2030? Um, did it already happen? Is it going to happen? Um, you know, and, um, you know, and how in the hell is it going to happen? Is the planet going to split or whatnot? But, um, you know, just a lot of different opinions. And I think everybody's right in a way. Every, you know, every, everybody's got their right opinion on it. 
You know, it's just, uh, and, and, and when you, now get back to what I was saying, when you practice these things on a daily basis, your routine, um, I think that it also, for, for some of us, for me, it's happened through telepathy, but, um, you know, you, you get towards, as you totally awaken and embody all those, you know, things that I basically said, when those things come together, um, you reach kind of an enlightenment, a new enlightenment, um, it, it's pretty much the death of your ego, yeah, maybe we all still have a little bit left, I think maybe just having a touch of it's healthy and a good way to have, um, you know, just to have it for, you know, your radar detector, your, you know, your bullshit detector or whatever, but maybe that's a different, that's something a little bit different than your stereotypical ego, okay, you know, you just, uh, and basically I think that's the, that's one of the key things that you're trying to achieve is that death of that ego, killing that thing off, you know, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it really is, you know, and it, it, it kind of, what it does is it also, when you get rid of that ego along when you, you've dropped a lot of your judgment, um, it leads to a more of a pure type of awareness, like a pure presence, like like a pure love and truth. And you can feel that pure, you know. And, and some of us, even when we haven't made it, ascended to that level yet or awakened to that level, we've had moments in our life where we felt pure truth and pure love. We've been in kind of a, almost a semi-zen state and you feel that love. Um, and it, and when you get in that mode, when you like after you've been through these awakening steps that I mentioned, you know, you, you feel a sense of gratitude. You feel a state of, like, bliss, a state of, like, grace. And it's not like, a, it's not like something in the conventional sense where you're grateful for something. You're, oh, you're happy you got that, that new, uh, I don't know what, that new golf club. You're happy you got that new sewing machine, whatever. This is like a true sense of... Well, it's spiritual gratitude. It's like it's felt from within instead of from in your head. That's kind of the way I would look at it anyway, you know. Um, it, I would say this, though, too. I would say that your basic first step, like towards ascension, when you first start out on this, it kind of begins with this... Uh, this kind of this self-concentration, this more focus inward, and kind of a, you're putting the material world kind of this to the side, it's like you're kind of taking a vacation for it, you're kind of retreating from it, you know, um, and, and that tends to, right off the bat, raise your consciousness a little bit, um, you, you get more into a state of union with the divine, you know, you grasp subtle things, finally, that you may never have caught on to. Um, you know, you kind of, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you kind of have this inner transformation go on. You know, and um, it, it kind of unlocks the door to this hidden reality that's always been there for you. Um, and you realize that everything is kind of flowing from the divine. The divine kind of permeates everything and... It's kind of, you're on this journey realizing like your true essence, tapping into God's omnipresent, top, tapping into the God that you are, that you are God. And that starts your journey, your long journey on the way to realizing you are God. Everybody else is a soul fragment of you and they are God too. They are all, we are all God. It's just that you have soul fragments out there and everybody though, all of them are in their own body as well. Okay. It's like that. It's like using 10% of your brain, like we do, but having it wake up slowly, 20, 30, 40, as you start having parallel realities and past life start melding together, right? And then you get towards 90% full consciousness, complete, and then you wake up and you just wake up and you, God wakes up. We're all one body. We were all one body. It's all us, but it's all one. You know, it's, it's deep, man. It's deeper than just a cliche like, oh, we're all one. You know, and people have said that all the years. Oh, how can you love somebody else if you don't love yourself? You see, all those are true. But usually when you've heard that stuff in yesteryear, it's just been a, <laughs> it's just been a matter of somebody using it as a cliche for good reasons, meaning, meaning well. 
And then, so what it does is it makes it played out in the mainstream, so people just kind of look at it like, oh, yeah, okay, gee, we're all one, oh, yeah, right. No, we all are, really. <laughs> no, seriously, when we reach the highest ascension level, I mean, through many, many eons and millennia of lifetimes of parallel realities, you know, whatever it may be, everybody else is a little bit different, you know, so... You know, that's kind of that's kind of in a nutshell what it is. I mean, you know, regardless of, you know, regardless of what your individual path happens to be, each person has their own journey that transcends words, that transcends their intelligence. It, it, it all comes back to one source, you know, slowly leading to a pure awareness of love, truth, killing off that ego, limiting your judgment. See, that's another funny thing about judgment. The odd thing about judgment is when you have no judgment or you have very little, like say you have very little or none left, it actually gives you the ability to judge. And what I mean by that, it's not, I don't like to use that word, but, you know, say somebody's judging somebody, oh, that person's got this problem, oh, God, you know, they're this, they're that. That person is projecting onto that person. That person doesn't know what that person's got going on. They're just assuming because they have a problem with it, what that person's doing or who they are or how they are, and they have a problem within themselves. But when you look at a situation like that with no judgment and you're told something right, you don't, that they've done, you don't have any judgment because you, you, and you know the truth. You can see through bullshit because you see everything. You see all the possibilities. Because you have no judgment, you can see the truth. Because you understand that all innate possibilities are a reality and could be. Or could be, I mean. You get that. You know what I mean? You understand that. Uh, you know, um, you know, you can immerse yourself in meditation, okay? You can immerse yourself in yoga, you know, you can, you can, you can create, you know, you can do this and you can recreate your environment, right? These are all things that you can do to, you know, speed your awakening, right? And, and there is no right or wrong answer, okay? Um, you can do, you know, you can even do things like, you know, write yourself little notes. You can, you know, you can make your own... This is something somebody told me one time. You can make your own symbols, you know, um, inside of your soul. You can have these flashing in your head, your own custom neon signs. Hell, you could even do them outward if you, you know, if you had the resources to. You know, you could make a sign that I am awakened. I am ascending. I practice yoga. I love my body. My body is a temple. My body is the light. My body is love. My body is pure. My body is perfect. You know, these are all things that you can go into. But back to the differences again. People have differences of opinion on what ascension is. And, you know, it, and sometimes, you know, some people can confuse ascension in a time. And I've done this before, folks, with a major shift going on. Because we all have these little shifts going on constantly, constantly, constantly. Mercury's in retrograde. Mercury's in retrograde. Mercury's in retrograde. But, oh, fuck, man. It's always in that retrograde. Well, but it's a good reason to use when you're having aches and pains. And more than likely, there's probably a lot of truth to it every time. But, you know, then what goes on, right, is, okay, you've got these major shifts that happen. Like what's going on kind of lately, off and on, the last, you know, just here recently, I don't know, in Earth time, what, last month, couple months, whatever, some people a few weeks. Um, you know, you have these collective shifts where it's a collective. Like earlier I talked about what's the difference between a collective ascension and a self-ascension. Okay, so you've got both. And like I said, a lot of times... I think what we're waiting for them to do is we're waiting for them to collide with each other. We're we're waiting for one to go to the other futures to go to the other one's future, so that one can intersect with their present. It's it's really um, it's really uh, very fascinating. It's uh, definitely interesting and uh, it, it it's an interesting um quandary really, if you'd call it that. I don't know if it's such a quandary, but. You know, mixing the uh, personal shifts and personal ascension with the collective 
ascension and collective shifts, collective awakening, personal awakening, you know, and on and on and on. Well, you know, but that's kind of my thing. That's my opinion. If you were to ask me what do I think ascension is, you know, of course, there's two definitions. There's a one, like I talked about, where it means you ascended to a rank of general, you ascended the rank of admiral, you know, you ascended to, you know, the starting quarterback job for whoever the hell, you know what I mean? The 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 bum fucked Egypt nobodies, excuse my language. Um, you know, pardon me for that. But um you know, but ascension, if you ask me in the spiritual term, what it means like in our community with star seeds and light workers, man, you couldn't nail me down to one thing. I'd say that it's all I'd say, well, you're talking about the collective ascension, or are you talking about uh, you know, the self ascension? Well, you know, the collective ascension you know, is it going to be earth splitting off? Yeah, probably, possibly. But how is that going to happen? Is it going to be a physical thing? Is it going to be a mental thing? How is it going to go down? What's it going to look like exactly? Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've explored that topic in other shows, but I just don't know. You know, the more the more I go down this rabbit hole of, of ascension and awakening, the clearer of a head I get. But man, the more that I awaken, the more that I realize, the more I realize I really don't know. We just don't know. We know. We don't know what we don't know. And we don't know what we know. You know, Joe, yo, with the flow, go. You know what I mean? Sit, you know? So, but that's about it. I want to tell everybody, too, that um, uh, this is, of course, the Larry Locken channel at Pleiadian Express Production slash YouTube. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of talk. I'm going to do a little talk later on the smaller channel, uh, the Larry Locken 2 channel, Pleiadian Light Grid Project. Uh, yes, slash YouTube. I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, like, what people misinterpreting uh, technologies from, like, okay, thinking that something is magic, but really it's a, techno it's a technology that you don't understand. You know, it'd be like, let me give you an example. It'd be like, huh, well, I, this isn't going to be what I'm going to use, but it would be like um, it, taking a cell phone that had full internet, like an iPhone, full internet, back to the 19... Oh, let's go back to the 1970s even. Much less going back to before the Industrial Revolution. But let's even just go back to the 1970s. You know, you had maybe cable in some cities by that time. Otherwise, you got a few channels. Um, most homes still only had one TV yet. And then you bring the cell phone in and show them. First of all, the cell phone by itself would look like something from Star Trek. You know, and the fact that the internet was there, it'd be pure magic. You'd think of it as magic. What I'm going to talk about mainly is, man, World War II. We didn't have the technology yet for our jets to fly clear across the Pacific or the Atlantic without filling up. So we set up base on these little um, indigenous islands with uh, native tribes that had never seen anything like it before. And they thought we were from space. And I'll explain what the hell ensued after that. I know most people probably know the story, but I'm going to go over it. This is Rockin' Larry Locken. Again, I told you where you can find us. You can find me at Larry Locken on Facebook. Um, I'm, the, I'm the Larry Locken with the rainbow shooting out of my arms. There's a guy with gray hair and a beard. That's my dad. Uh, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Rockin' Locken or Rockin' Larry Locken, one word. Uh, you can go to, if you want to donate to the program, you can go to PayPal. Uh, you can pay as a guest if you're not registered. It's probably the safest way to donate money in the world. Uh, you know, my uh, handle is my email address, Lockin, last name first, Larry, LockinLarry at gmail.com. You know, we've got all kinds of groups and pages on Facebook. We've got the Pleiadian Light Grid Project page, Pleiadian Express Productions page, the Love Larry Lockin page, the Blue Ray Soul Guidance page, Pleiadian Rainbow Angelic Orbs page, um... The Syrian Egyptian Pyramid Connection, which I still, that's a talk I've been putting off. I'm going to talk again about how, not again, I'm going to talk about how the Syrians uh, and the Syria star influenced a lot of our ancient cultures here on earth, plus a lot of indigenous cultures, you know. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really go in on how it was probably different ones. It was different bands of Syrians that helped each of these various cultures, these various tribes and some of them were for malevolent and some of them were for benevolent reasons we you know i'm just gonna throw that food of thought out there thought for food whatever you want to call it all right this rock and lock and folks i'm out